I have cleared the interview, gotten into my dream company, but now when the work is being provided to me, I am getting stuck. This is the question a lot of junior and sometimes even the senior developers ask me. How do we debug these errors that we encounter during our day-to-day -day job that sometimes takes hours of our time? Let's find out how because in this video I will tell you the tips and tricks that you can use to debug your apps and a magical tool that will change the way you debug your apps by making it 10 times easier. So first let's see how we can debug error in a vanilla JS app then we're gonna move on to a react JS app. So over here I've opened simple HTML and a JavaScript file. So in this HTML file I have a p tag, a button and we, I've added this script file over here and when I click on this like button it changes the text to this text over here. Okay so I'm gonna quickly run it. So I'm gonna right click and say open with live server. Okay so we have our web page running over here. Now when we click on this like button notice it doesn't do anything. It should have updated this text to like this video right because we're targeting the p tag with the class name. So okay, I'm gonna keep this a script tag right over here. Try to find out what is the exact error in this scenario. A lot of people when they start doing web development, they try to overlook these small, small things. Let's suppose that we're, we are a junior developer and we have just started coding in HTML, CSS and JavaScript and how are we gonna find what this error is? So the first, the very logical thing that we can do over here is console log, right? So we're trying to change this text over here. Let's see, when we click on it, I'm gonna console log this thing over here. So I'm gonna open our console. If I click on like, okay, let's try to dive deep into this. The very first thing that you can notice over here that it gives us a line number. So script JS six. So now we know where the error is. So on line number six, okay. But we already knew that, right? Second thing, it says cannot set properties of null something is null and we're trying to access a property inside of it. So this is null in this case. It didn't give us the exact name for text to change but it gave us that inner text comes from somewhere which is null. So now we know the source of our error. Fine let's go on to text to change and see what the problem is. So over here we're doing document.getElementById and we're trying to access this class my texts. But see my text doesn't exist. It is my text. So if we remove this S and now if you try to click on this button, yep, it works perfectly. Okay. So apart from console log, is there any other way to, you know, identify this? Let's uh, bring that error back. And what I'll do instead of this console log, I'll just say debugger. And now if I try to press like, notice our debugger has been activated. Now this is going to be much helpful for us. So we can clearly see over here that this thing is null. We didn't have to do console log and stuff. This debugger helped us identify the source of our error. So cool. Now we can simply go and check this line. What's wrong with this line? So it was the class name. So if we just fix this class name and this will work perfectly fine. Awesome. All right, now let's move on to a more advanced vanilla JS app and see what kind of errors do we encounter in these apps. So I've opened my employee database manager over here. So if you don't know about this app, I've made this app in my machine coding interview playlist. You can click the link in the description down below and watch that video. So simply in this app, what is supposed to happen is, so in the script.js, I'm fetching this data from this file. So here's this file over here and I'm fetching the data of the employees, which should be rendered this side. There's something wrong with this API, right? Then this happens with us in uh, when we work in day-to-day -day jobs as well sometimes. So the first thing, the very first thing that you need to do is to try to check in your network tab what kind of error you're getting. So if I click on this inspect, and if I go to network tab over here, let's refresh our app. So we can see the status is 404. So these statuses or these errors define what kind of uh, problem we're facing. So for example, if it's 200, then everything is working absolutely fine if it's between 200 to 300. But if it's somewhere around 400, it means there's error in the front end. Some, there's something wrong with the front end. But if the status is somewhere around 500, then it's something wrong with the back end. So over here we can see we get 404 not found. Okay, so definitely it's a front end error. So let's go to our script.js and see. Okay, we're doing slash API slash data. Adjustment. Okay, so we are supposed to add dot over here because see in this folder, we're supposed to target this API folder, right? So we have to say dot slash 
API slash data object. So this was just a spelling mistake you can say while writing the APIs endpoint. So if we save this now, you can see we're getting all of our data displayed over here. Okay, this is fine. Now let's click on add employee and try to add some employees information. So okay, I'll just state and press on submit. What just happened? Uh, my details were not added in this uh, form. Let's see if there's any error. Nope, no errors. Hmm, what's wrong? So if you notice when we try to add some employee and submit it, you're gonna see our page refreshes. How do we prevent this? So when we are submitting a form, we have a function called prevent default. So e dot prevent default. And when we do this, it's gonna prevent the default behavior from this page. So now if you try to add an employee, see everything works fine and yep, we see we have added an employee but there's some other error over here. Showing object, HTML input element. So something's wrong with first and last name. Okay, let's see then uh, I'm gonna add a console log over here and let's try to console log first and last name. So let's just do for first name for now. And I'm going to open the inspect console, click on add employee and click on submit. Hmm, what do we have over here? We're getting an input field. How, now, how are we supposed to know what's wrong with this uh, first name? How do we access the uh, exact value of uh, this first name inside of this input field? Is there any other way? Yes, I just told you we can use debugger. Okay, fine. We can use debugger as well, but uh, we if we just directly want to check uh, right over here without making any changes inside of our code what's wrong we can go to sources and here is our script so okay there's our uh, error supposedly right so i'm gonna add a breakpoint over here when we click on this numbers over here it adds a breakpoint and the app will stop at this particular point so let's add another employee let's try to submit this and okay let's see let's expand this and if we hover on this, now we see all of the values that are inside of this input field. So if we just use console, something like console.log, it won't show you all of these details. But now we can see all of the values that are inside of our input field. So now we can simply go on and find this value over here. And we can simply use it inside of our app. So I, I'm assuming same thing with the last name as well. So okay going to simply go on over here and add dot value dot value great let's try to remove our debugger and try to run this let's try to run this again okay let's fill the form and submit it awesome everything is working absolutely fine great let's see one other way to do the exact same thing did you know that we have an inbuilt debugger inside of our vs code as well so so if you click on this run and debug and click on this run and debug button, let's select uh, Node.js. It's gonna give you this configuration over here and simply instead of this port number, you have to add your own port number. So mine is 5500. And if I add on it uh, and just click on launch Chrome over here, it is going to launch my app in Chrome, okay. Now what we have to do is simply add a breakpoint, let's say over here. And if I try to add an employee and submit it, notice over here in the variables, we have all of this. We have the address, contact number, date of birth, email, and we have the first name and last name as well. And now we can expand it and we can find whatever that we need to use inside of our form, which in this case is this value over here. So yep, you can either use Chrome to debug or you can also use VS Code to debug, which is much more efficient. As you can see, we don't have to leave VS Code. But now I want to tell you about that magical tool that I was referring at the start of the video, which will make your debugging 10 times easier. But before that, if you're preparing for your front-end interview and you would like me to help you in your front-end interview preparation, just click the link in the description down below and book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. We're going to discuss tips, tricks. I'm going to give you a lot of resources. I'm going to design a proper roadmap tailored to your situation which is going to help you out a lot in your front-end interview preparation. So click the link in the description down below and book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. So I'm going to go to my extensions tab over here and search console ninja. And I've already installed this extension. You can click on the install button to install this extension. And now 
if I go back over here. Also, one more thing, if you're using the live server like me, you have to enable one feature. So if you go to settings and search Ninja, oops, Ninja, click on general and tick mark both of these checkboxes if you're using live server and restart your VS code. Now, notice, so I have my application up and running over here and I'm gonna click on this Ninja icon and click on start console ninja and it has successfully started when you see this i button this means that console ninja is successfully running and receiving runtime logs great so now our issue is right over here so i'm gonna again we have already uh, set up our breakpoint over here so let's open our app and try to add an employee and submit now coming back to our app if we you can see all of these flags over here if we hover on this first name, you're going to see we get all of these details right over here and you can go inside of it and find your value keyword and just simply add it over here by doing dot value and this will work absolutely fine. Great. So this was vanilla JavaScript. Now let's see how we can debug react.js app by using something like console ninja. Okay. So we have a very simple to do list app made in react running over here. So now if you try to enter a to do, let's say video and click on add to do these to do's are not being added to this list what's wrong so instantly we can notice that we have used a variable over here const to do's and this is not the ideal scenario when we are building a react.js app we have to use a use state right else this will not update our app and render our data so if i just uh, duplicate it and create a state for our to do's set to do and now I can just take this set to do's and put it over here. So I'll just say existing to do's and the new input value. Let's save this. Hmm. We get some other error. To do's dot map is not a function. Now, as a junior developer, it's really hard to identify where this error is coming from. So if we have something like console ninja, if you scroll down, you can see it shows us to do's dot map is not a function. So over here is the real issue. So now we can see and debug that something is wrong with to do's. So if I put a breakpoint over here, we are getting empty string, empty string, empty string. Okay, so that means this is the issue. So if we remove it and just add the array over here, everything will be working absolutely fine. Awesome. Also one more thing, if you want to see what is inside of this to do's, I can add a breakpoint at this particular step. So I can say shift, plus F9 and yep, it added a breakpoint over here. So now if I try to add a to do, let's say hello to do, yep, you see, it shows us the updated value of that. Let's add some other to do. Yep, you see, it has updated this to do's variable. Now let's say we have a use effect over here and it's gonna display this to do's dot length every time to do's changes. So I'll just add to do's over here and it's going to display every time the to do's change, right? So, and I'm going to add a breakpoint over here. So, notice it shows that effect triggered with this thing. So, right now it's empty. So, if I just add something like hello and add to do, you will notice as soon as this changes, it's going to show effect triggered with hello. And we can also see the value over here. So, if I press shift plus F9, see it's showing us the real time value. So, work have to do yep you see now the length is two and effect triggered with hello to work awesome so this is a, such a useful feature of this extension now there can be times like this where okay you're rendering these to do's and we use something like curly braces and we forget to use the return statement over here and which returns us not getting anything right over here just adding a breakpoint over here and trying to see if we have something inside of our to do's or not. So, add to do. So, yeah, we can see. But it's because it's not returning anything. That is why it's showing us undefined. So, this is also one of the most common errors that we encounter in our day to day lives. You can either do return over here with curly braces or you could have simply done the parenthesis without this return. And everything will work absolutely fine. Some features of Console Ninja shown in this video are from its pro version. So if you like to purchase their pro version, click the link in the description down below. Right now, they're having their biggest sale of the year. 
Okay, now I've made some changes inside of our to-do list app. I've added the functionality to filter our to-dos based on completed or active. So if I say work, if we click on any of these to-dos, they're going to be going inside of this completed section. So we click on completed, you're going to see this. Active, you're going to see this. And on all, you're going to see this. So actually, you can see these uh, this data inside of our VS Code in real time. So if I so we have this uh, filter to do's. Where is it? Yep. If we add a breakpoint over here, you can see this is empty right now. Okay. If but if I just say to work code add to do. Now if I go on over here, you're gonna see inside of our filter to do's we get both of these. But if I click on it, notice. It gets updated we can see that this to do was completed so now these were very small example that i showed you in this video but in the real world scenario in the bigger apps it can be really challenging to find errors and tools like console ninja and vs code debugger chrome debugger or just using the debugger keyword can help you a lot sometimes to inspect where the error is coming from so i hope you're going to use these techniques in the real world and let me know in the comments down below which technique you found the most helpful